Now, where does this picture come in with Esri, which I find is interesting? That is with the maps. There are many things that are fascinating about a map. One is the, the map is the way they relate to the environment. How do you do hunting? At what time of the year? When can you do hunting? All this they put down in maps. All they put down in drawings. And so it's really become very exciting. I'm talking about hundreds of Indians working on this in a collective way. Because it, it changes. If you have a map done by men who do hunting, it's different from a map done by women who, who do the gardening. If you have a map in the wet season, it's different from the map in the dry season. The maps are alive all the time. And you can draw it in the past. How was it with their myths? How is it nowadays? Why did it change? Seasonal. What were the impacts? And then what is the future you want? And how would you like to see that map? The whole idea for these cultures really, not only to be empowered, to survive and to be empowered, they need to be able to put their maps and their management planning and their territorial knowledge on maps to be able to communicate with the outside world. And here maps allow them, and not only one map, several maps, one on top of the other. Ecosystems, traditional knowledge, sacred sites, women's gardens, uh, their children where they play, and you start building a whole holistic approach. They come to the government or an environmental management, and they have this information, suddenly they start realizing, wait a moment, we have power here. <laughs> What we're doing here, first, the information that comes from the indigenous people belongs to indigenous people. We would not publish it without their permission. They decide when and how. But what's important there is our real point comes is that how do you share it? You share it, and the way we work there with them, you share it on a political scenario. And now we're going to discuss together the future of the Amazon. Mining has come in the last three or four years. It's coming in. But the indigenous people, by doing their maps of sacred sites, by doing their maps of the air spaces they use, of putting all their knowledge on these maps, they come to the government and say, look, this is the way we live our territory. Now, you want to come into with mining, the Constitution says you can do mining on condition you don't undermine our life system. How are we going to deal with this? The main thing is decision sharing. The main thing is, as they say here in the States, who's driving the bus? You have to negotiate. This information is power in that sense. It's a possibility of negotiating of how we can build the Amazon together. It's not kicking everybody out. It's how can we build a sustainable Amazon for the future.